Hey, what's up? John Shred here, and today we are going to unbox this brand new Asus Pro Art B650 Creator Motherboard. I want to get into why I selected this, the cheaper version of the two Pro Art boards. So stay tuned for more. Welcome back. If this is your first time here, uh, I like to review new tech. I recently came across Asus's Pro Art line because I heard about their new GPUs, the new 4070 Ti and 4080 Pro Art cards they announced a couple weeks ago. I've heard people talk about the Pro Art line, but it really didn't catch my eye until I heard about those GPUs and recently picked up a used Ryzen 7950X. And I thought, hmm, maybe I could do a full Pro Art build. My plan is to replace my current 12900KS with that Ryzen 7950X as my main personal computer uh, for video editing and casual gaming. So here, let's get this open and take a peek at it. And then we'll talk about the differences of why I chose this board over the X670 chipset version. Okay, awesome box. I mean, it's cool. I, I like the design of the Pro Art in the sense that this black and gold theme. Um, I plan on putting this system into the new Fractal North case. Um, which I'm also pretty, pretty excited. So let's get this thing opened up. I mean, the back of the box is, is pretty fancy. I mean, eh, compared to most motherboard boxes, I, I like it. All right, let's get this going. Wham, okay. Accessories, let's pop this board out. The accessories are the usual, I'm not too worried about it. Ta da. Maybe like that. Okay, there we go. That's right side up. It says Pro Art. I don't know, it's pretty cool. Uh, I don't think you'll actually see a whole lot of the board. Uh, once I put it in into the case, which is which is unfortunate, but I mean that's that's how she rolls. Let's get into essentially the differences between the B650 Creator and the X7 7 X670 Creator Wi-Fi. Now, when you look at the Pro Art series, there are just kind of two options. Uh, I mean, if you go Intel, there's two options, and AMD, there's, there's two different options, uh, which is pretty common when you're looking at uh, releases for CPUs. They do usually come up with two different chipsets, a higher end one with all the features, and then a little bit lower end that omits some of the newer tech. The question I wanna to answer today is, what is that newer tech, and is it worth spending quite a bit more on? So the first difference between these two boards is the fact that the X670 supports USB 4.0 displays. Now, I mean, I don't think that's super common right now. Uh, I mean, USB 4.0 is, is pretty cool. It can, it can handle one 8K monitor or four, two 4K monitors. But I mean, I'm still using DisplayPort myself and even HDMI on a few. To me, USB 4.0 is not even a thing yet. Now, one of the big selling features of the X670 is that it comes with PCI Express 5.0 GPU slots. All of the NVIDIA 4000 series and the new AMD cards are still PCI Express 4.0. I mean, so unless you're really future-proofing yourself for maybe the next generation of GPUs, it doesn't really make a difference. Gamer Nexus did a video here where they even took um, you know, fourth generation, the 4000 series cards and NVIDIA 4090 and put it into a PCI Express 5 slot to see if it makes any difference, and it didn't. Next is storage. Okay, so both have an, an M.2 PCI Express 5 slot. Now the X670 has two of them, the B650 has one. The speed difference between PCI Express 4 for storage, for NVMe storage, versus 5 is hardly anything. Really the advantage is if you start to use multiple NVMe hard drives in your system, it helps with PCI lanes and can essentially allow more bandwidth. Now, these are creator boards. Uh, ideally, you could be using multiple hard drives for storage for video content. So this could be a possibility of something that 
you'd use. Personally, I'm using a single two terabyte Samsung 980 Pro. I've even looked at the 990 Pro and it's still PCI Express 4. So I mean, PCI Express 5 storage is not common yet and they're probably really expensive. So for me, I'm still happy with using PCI Express 4.0 and I'll stick with the B650. Networking. Okay, now this is by far the biggest difference when it comes to these two boards. Starting with Ethernet, I mean, they both come with two Ethernet ports, but they are a little different. X670 comes with a 2.5 gigabit port, but it also comes with a 10 gigabit port. I don't know about you, but I'm still using one gigabit at my house and I haven't really upgraded yet. Now, I have moved into a new home, as you probably noticed. And I mean, I do have the opportunity to upgrade and install cabling to go higher than one gigabit. Copper Ethan is possible to go up to 10 gig Ethernet, but I've heard some horror stories. 2.5 gig, that's okay. So when you look at the B650 version of this motherboard, it does still come with one two and a half gigabit Ethernet port and then one standard, one gigabit. So, I mean, right here, it's like, do you, do you need the 10 gigabit? Is your house, your office capable of supporting 10 gigabit? Or are you gonna future-proof? Tell me, I'd love to know where you're going in the next two to five years and if 10 gigabit is in your future. Next, we're talking wireless. Now, the X670 version, as the name says, comes built in with a Wi-Fi adapter. And I'll admit, I've been pretty spoiled lately that all the motherboards that I've been using also have built-in Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapters. Uh, I'm on the second floor of this home. Uh, the first and second floor are finished and there is zero network cable installed in this house. So I, I'm, I am forced to run on Wi-Fi at this time. And if I didn't have a built-in adapter, it means I have to buy another one. Uh, I mean, it, is it a big deal? Well, looking at the B650, it does not come with a Wi-Fi adapter, but one of the M.2 slots, the 2230 slot, kind of small guy, is specifically designed to house a Wi-Fi Bluetooth controller. What are they worth? I mean, you look on Newegg right now, and they range between 20 to 65 bucks. So for a full, you know, Wi-Fi 6 or even Wi-Fi 6E. So if you bought this board and then, you know, put in your own separate you know, Wi-Fi adapter, that, that could work well. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, please smash that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Okay, let's talk USB ports themselves. I mean, we did mention the X670 comes with USB 4.0 support. I just, once again, don't have any 4.0 devices. I don't have a storage that, that uses 4.0. I don't have anything. I mean, most of my stuff's still 3.0, maybe 3.2. Knowing that this is a creator board, Maybe you're connecting a NAS directly that, that could support it, but from what I've seen, most of the NAS solutions, they support Thunderbolt. Now, you may or may not know, but Thunderbolt's an Intel feature and you won't find it on any AMD board. So, I mean, can you use uh, an external NAS with USB 4.0? Maybe, do they even make them? I I'm not sure. So, I mean, as, if this is maybe the next board you're gonna use for the 10, next five, 10 years, then maybe you're future-proofing yourself. For me, I don't have anything USB 4.0 and I'll probably have a new computer within the next year or two. Physically, there are a few more USB ports on the XX70 version of this motherboard, which would be kind of nice. Uh, looking right now, I have about six things plugged into the USB type A. Um, I mean, it would be nice to have a couple extra. I'll, I'll give that point to X6 Audio controller. Okay, now both boards have Realtek 7.1 audio controllers in it. The X670 has a more fancy S1220A. I'm not much of an audiophile when it comes to listening to things on my computer. Um, I do like have a separate stereo system or speakers. Uh, I don't know, is that a big deal on, on the B650 version on the Asus website? doesn't even say what model, you know, module is in there. It's just Realtek 7.1. I don't know, I, I think for my needs, it'll be fine. Internal IO connectors. The, the boards are pretty similar. Um, there is one extra chassis fan, uh, kind of 
header on the board, which, which is okay. I mean, fans are great. Um, other than that, the big difference is power delivery. The X670 has a 16 plus two VRM power stages versus a 12 plus two VRM on the B650. What does that mean? Well, it's also the one supports up to 70 amps, and this one here is 60. Now, I'll post a kind of a, a link here to a video that Linus did years ago explaining VRMs and, and why that matters, but really it comes down to overclockability and the stability when doing that. This is a workstation board. I don't expect you to be overclocking it. That's not the idea. Stability is probably more important just from a kind of stock settings. And if you wanted to overclock it, go with a you know, an Asus Hero or, or an Extreme board that has you know, 18 plus two phases and can support 100 to 110 amps. Now is the 12 plus two VRM stage going to be enough for the 7950X Ryzen CPU? I hope so, I mean, we'll find out, stay tuned. Other than those points, I mean, the boards look very similar. Uh, they both have a very similar design. Um, yeah, it really comes down to the chipset and the features. Let's talk price and value. So, I mean, this is where it's, it's a big jump. The X670 looking here on Newegg.com is worth $500 USD, which, I mean, a lot of motherboards are in that price range these days, but this board here is at $270 USD. It's just about half the price. Now, consider you will have to possibly add in a Bluetooth wireless adapter for let's say 30 bucks, bringing it up to $300 US. So the question is for that additional $200 US, what are you getting? I mean, you get your 10 gig, you get your USB 4.0, your better power phases, your PCI Express 5 on the GPU. Uh, do those matter to you? Is that worth 200 bucks? Personally, I'm not ready for 10 gigabit. I mean, it's just, it, I'm not there yet. I'd be even super happy if I upgraded to 2.5. So uh, in USB 4.0, I don't care about if it was, if I was doing Intel build and it was Thunderbolt 4, maybe. In conclusion, I'm gonna try this board. I mean, stay tuned. I have a video coming up. I'm gonna make my personal build uh, using this board. And I mean, I don't plan on overclocking it, but stability is important. So I wanna get it up and running, make sure it works. Stay tuned and you can follow along. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for the next one.